ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first episode of the Star Maker. And in this particular edition, we shall be talking to one of our most beautiful, stunning, hardworking, passionate young girls that we discovered so many years ago. Can you imagine in 2014? But right now, she has worked so hard transversing the entire universe, walking right from Cape Town where she started, and then later on went to Paris, Milan, New York, London. Spain, name it all. She has literally globe trotted the entire universe, moving the entire world, working as a professional fashion model, and right now she is transitioning into becoming a business lady, a businesswoman. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me, the CEO of Pakello, Patricia Akello. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Jaram. How are you? I'm great. How are welcome you? Welcome back home. Thank you. Man, Feels it's good to be home. Been a Janet, yeah. it's been it a long has. one. So take us back to 2014 okay. when you started your journey. How was the journey like for you? Well, it all started way before 2014 because mm. I really wanted to be a model. I was a tall girl, I was a skinny girl, and of course I was a bit confident about myself, but <laughs> not really confident because in Uganda it's a bit different. Mm. Uh, the way they consider a model and I felt I wasn't fitting in it. I didn't really have the platform to begin and trying to go to all these big brands. I remember even talking to Joram so many times, sending him emails and all and not getting response and I didn't give up. I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and you know one day God just said, Trisha, this is your day and I was still in school. It was almost my last year mm -hmm. in um, YMCA. I was doing tourism management. Of course, not for me, but <laughs> I was just doing it because I needed a paper, you know, to keep me going. I remember when Joram told me, you either choose Africa's Next Top Model or you go to South Africa and pursue your dreams. I was like, why not? Yeah. So you get the call and then you're moving to South Africa. Yeah. You landing in Cape Town, what was the first reaction like for you? First of all, my, my experience traveling was hectic. Mm. It was my first time uh, sitting on a flight and I used Ethiopian airline. I had to go all the way to Addis Ababa and then went to Johannesburg and then I realized my flight was booked wrong. So mm. I had to book another flight my first time out of the country with no one to tell me, hey, do this and this. And that's when I realized, hey, Trisha, reality <laughs> just kicked in. You have to do this. It was amazing because Fiona sent a driver to pick me up from the airport. He has met so many models mm. and he knows what we models go through, especially when it's your first time going to a different country. Mm. And this guy started telling me, you know, you're going to make it big here. You're going to be amazing. Mm. Cape Town is not that scary as people say and mm. all that. And I was excited. I wasn't thinking of anything negative or anything. I was just excited to see my agency and see how I'm going to be working and all that. And immediately I arrived. The next day I had to go for a show, which was amazing. It was so great. And what else? <laughs> so much to talk about, but yeah, I'll keep. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So comparing, you know, the market here in Uganda where you were working before, because yeah. I remember before you actually left, yeah. you did some Hala fashion news and then yeah. just like a bunch of little shows and yeah. then all that. How is the market like in Cape Town and then in Uganda? So the market in Cape Town is mm. commercial for sure. Also in Uganda it's very commercial. Mm. But also um, in, in Cape Town, they give us high fashion models a platform because mm. there are many clients who need high fashion models like super tall and skinny. And then it's different here in Uganda where people um, consider maybe they have their way of considering beauty as, you know, being all curvy mm. and light skinned. And, and when you're tall, they give you all this weird names or phone or whatever <laughs> and you have to deal with all these insecurities and when you go to South Africa and you're given this platform you're like oh wow mm -hmm. you know there are so many people out there who just need to hear this there is a market out there mm -hmm. which is different than the one from Uganda and I'm so grateful to you Joram that now you've opened people's eyes mm -hmm. you've opened so many people that have gotten to learn that beauty is not just the outside appearance mm. and beauty comes in different shapes and forms. Mm. So I might be tall and there might be another person who's short, but we are, we are all models, you know. Someone might be a commercial model, mm. I might be a, a high fashion model, or just a leg model, you know, wear mm. shoes or just fingers. We are all beautiful and in our own way. So 
yeah, the market's a bit different, but I feel we are getting somewhere. Absolutely. <laughs> and then, you know, what are some of the most memorable jobs that you did in South Africa? Because, girl, I remember when you were in SA, you were lecturing mm. every magazine, right? From yeah. Elle, Marie Clay, yes. Women, um, um, Health Magazine, name it all. You literally did all the magazines. You were yeah. working for all these big designers. Yeah. What were some of your favorite jobs in Cape Town? I used to work with this uh, stylist called Kelly. I remember her. She, she's like a very high fashion model. She used to book me a lot for Marie Claire. Mm -hmm. And that was my favorite part of it because first of all, it was my first time seeing myself in, in a magazine. In a magazine. <laughs> So I'll never forget that experience and I'm so grateful to the South African market because I got to realize, oh wow, Trisha, you're amazing. You're amazing. Even mm -hmm. if you didn't have all these people tell you this, or even if your family was supporting you and mm -hmm. the outside world there is like putting you down, you are beautiful. So from then when I booked this Marie Claire a couple of times, that really made me realize how great I am. <laughs> I mean... I know, so, so many people that are watching right now must be wondering, what's your true definition of beauty? Now that you've talked about that, you know, back here at home, we had the wrong perception. Yeah. We actually told tall girls like you yeah. are not that amazing, lanky girls, yeah. broad shoulders. That is why, like, to be honest, because she said, um, you know, she used to like, text me the whole time, send me pictures, and I'm like, oh, okay. And to yeah. be honest, yeah. this is like a confession. I remember the first yes. time you emailed me, I was like, okay, this girl is too tall, she's very lanky. Mm -hmm. Simply because I didn't understand, didn't understand beauty. Like, my definition of beauty was absolutely different yeah. so according to you what's your true definition of beauty um, to me I feel we should not even describe beauty mm. it should just flow in because we might just a mere tree is beautiful <laughs> and you can't describe how a tree is it's mm. just green and leaves and you know it's beautiful so I feel we should not really describe beauty but again, if I'm to give a definition about beauty, it just it just comes in different shapes. Mm. It comes in different colors. It comes in different body types. It's hard to describe beauty, but I feel everything that was created by God is beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It's beautiful. I love that. I love that definition of beauty. Yeah. Everyone out there that is watching you are beautiful, no matter how you look like. You just have that from the top model herself, the supermodel. See of the keller. <laughs> and then you moving to the next step because you did so well in South Africa. How long were you in South Africa before was, you actually moved to start your international career in New York? I think I was there for like two years mm. in South Africa. In between the two years, I was going to Europe, to, mm. Ger to Germany and then Paris because I had an agency in Germany then. Mm. And it wasn't easy in South Africa because, you know, you're working but you don't see the money and all that you have to pay back the agency <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't I didn't see any money at all because I had to pay back the agency and all this food I used to get from the agency you know money from the agency for upkeep mm -hmm. so when I went to Sweden I did um, and other stories mm -hmm. that was an amazing job for me because it helped me pay my bills back in South Africa mm -hmm. and then from South Africa and Europe in between, I went to New York. Now that you've worked in all markets, you've worked yeah. in Paris, Milan, New York, London, what do you think it takes to be a great model? First of all, I feel um, if you're favored, mm. I feel I'm really favored. And favor. Yeah, favor yeah. for sure. Because I always ask God for his favor, mm. like in front of people, because not everyone is going to look at you True. the same way. You know, Absolutely. even when we go to castings, this casting directors don't look at us the same way mm -hmm. you know they might look at you and you're like no she's not for that market she's mm -hmm. not, you know so it's just favor and patience for sure I was super patient and hard work I always remembered where I came from mm -hmm. and that kept me pushing and having my family support me and then having Joram here support me so you just need someone to support you for sure, someone who's going to have your back 100% because mm. the market is really tough and then you have to be patient, you have to be, you have to ask God for his favour. Sure. All of us are blessed in different ways but if again you're blessed in this market, you're going to make it through it for sure. Yes. You absolutely need to be praying, favour, favour, mm -hmm. favour. And you just heard it from her, family is also very important. Yeah. Alongside also having a very, you know, great mother agent also yeah. plays a very, very important role. So you moving to New York, we yeah. all hear New York is a jungle, yeah. New York is cutthroat, New York is competitive. Mm -hmm. But God, you've been doing Mark Jacobs, you've been doing 
Fenty Beauty, you've been doing all these big beauty campaigns yeah. and all these big jobs. How have you managed to actually thrive in the jungle of New York City? The jungle. Yes, New York is a jungle for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. From the moment I went to New York, mm. I was broke. I only had like $500, but I had a dream. I, I believed in myself, I, I felt it, I, inside me I felt it, I knew I was going to make it. Mm. Come rain, come shine, you know? And having an amazing agency that is there to support you mm. in whatever you need, that was the, the, you know, the big oomphs for me. Like they pushed me, they believed in me. Even if I was believing in myself, those people really believed in me. Muse really pushed me so hard. Mm -hmm. And then I had Joram here, you know, talking to Muse and I talking to Fiona and telling her, you know, we need to push Trisha, I believe in her, I believe in her. Mm -hmm. That also made me, you know, not get scared of New York. Because New York is really, really hard. The first time I went to my casting for Fashion Week, I saw so many girls. Mm -hmm. All of us tall. You know, amazing, I, beautiful, <laughs> stunning. I was, I, I'm tall, but like I met people who are way taller than me. <laughs> you know, I was skinny by then, and I, well, I'm still skinny, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you meet other people who are like so perfect. You're like, damn, I wish, I wish I had this body, but you cannot have it all. Mm -hmm. You just have to have that one thing that will, you know, put you out there. So. Yeah. In God's grace. Yeah, yeah. New York City is yeah. a jungle, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. And um, But how do you compare the markets? New York, Paris, London, and then Milan. Because literally you've excelled in all these markets. How do you compare all those markets all together? New York is so inclusive. Mm -hmm. we, there are so many people there. But again, the market is a bit different because they're trying to make it so inclusive of mm -hmm. other races, other shapes and mm -hmm. everything. But New York has really tried to be super inclusive. And then going to Paris, it's a bit different. Well, my experiences in Paris wasn't great at all. Mm -hmm. So I don't really have a lot of memories in, in Paris. <laughs> Milan is really the market to be, for sure, because like, there are so many designers. And they, when they look at a black model, they're like, wow, she's mm -hmm. really beautiful. She's different. She can do this. She looks amazing in this color, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel Milan is so excited to explore the market and like have different people, different body color and mm. shapes and everything. So they try to see that they can include everyone. Whereas in, in New York, they already have it. You know, they have the black models, they have the white models, those from Russia, Asia, and it just needs someone to speak up more and let them know we are all different and the market needs inclusivity. Mm. Yeah. I like the fact that you talked about inclusiveness and diversity yeah. because to be honest the standards sometimes are pretty high and yeah. they're pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Coming to you know body shapes now that they need girls to you know just have hips of like maximum 34, 35 yeah. and then them being super tall simply because they're making you know sample sizes but I yeah. like the fact that you people are now advocating for that, yeah. you're fighting for that. So many kids keep coming here during the Monday and then telling us oh I want to be like Patricia, I want to be like Akela, I want to be like Amito, I want to be like all these big girls but yeah. you know to just hear that it actually means you have left a map and do not stop just keep going very hard so i know you always come back home to give back because you're very passionate about you know of course there's so many people out there need to know about yeah. what has been your passion what have you been doing to come back home to give back all right yeah um, it all started way back because um everyone is always celebrating their birthday mm -hmm. and you know they throw all these big parties buy cakes and buy juice and everything so I was like, you know what, instead of throwing it my birthday party, how about I use that money and give back? Mm. So the first thing I did, the first time I, I really wanted to start giving back was when I, um, I called back here and I was like, you know what, it's almost my birthday and mm. how about I use my money and pay for someone in P7 who's going to sit and hasn't Amazing. paid school fees yet. So how about I use that money to pay for someone's tuition mm. and they go to school. So I spoke to some people, they were like, wow, this is amazing, and how about you just make it big? Mm. How about you just go to a school and, you know, visit these girls, there are so many girls out there who need people to talk to, people who can inspire them. And I felt like, you know, me having the platform, I can use it to my advantage to speak to these girls, to tell them 
the world is beautiful and mm. the world loves them and they can do amazing stuff. Mm. So that's when we, me and my sister came up with uh, Dignity for a Girl Child. Amazing. And it's based um, in Northern Uganda because yeah, the North really went through a lot. And so, and it's my home, it's my hometown and everything has to begin from home mm. to spread out. So we started um, going to schools. That's when I came to you and you joined. You were like so happy to join. Yeah. And then other people were also happy to help us because you know we can't do this by ourselves. We need everyone around us to support. So we went to um, to a school in my village, mm -hmm. deep in my village. It was a ride, <laughs> and me seeing these girls just be happy, just to have a bottle of Coca-Cola and a biscuit and mm. reusable pads. It really touched my heart and I felt like we can do amazing stuff. Just mm. with one penny, one dollar, you know, 3,000 shillings, we can make change. Us being happy, if we are happy and if people around us are happy, mm. we ourselves are happy. So that really kept pushing me and I remembered mom telling me, um, telling us when we are growing up, be good to the people around you because at some point you might meet them, you know. So I just try to be a nice person. Amazing, that's <laughs> what I call being, you know, a model with a purpose, beauty with a purpose. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming back home and then, you know, support all these girls. Because I know so many people have been asking, all oh, these girls make a lot of money, all these girls are just, you know, on planes moving up and down, but they do come back home and they do give back. They stand for different causes all together and I'm so proud of you that you actually come back to inspire the girl child to, you know, give back as much, you know, as possible. So to everyone out there that is watching, every time Patricia is in town and they're doing something, please come join them. Yeah. And um, the other thing that a lot of people have been wondering is, do you people ever face problems in this business? Because all that a lot of people out there see is magazines, Magazine. editorials, the shows, the glam, their designers, the parties. Yeah. What are some of the biggest problems that international models do face? First of all, everyone, I feel everyone gets broke at some point. Do you ever get broke, Patricia? <laughs> Sorry, <I'm... laughs> Everyone gets broke at some point, you know? Yeah. I reach a point when I only have $100 on my account, which is different here. If I have 100 I can do amazing <laughs> stuff. And then there, $100, it does nothing. You have to leave it on your account to keep your account running, or else mm. you're going to be overcharged. And then you're like, oh my God, how am I going to go to my casting? Mm. Or how am I going to do this? But um, we really get broke at some point. Mm. But again, other than that, um, the market being broad and having all these other beautiful models out there you have to compete with. Competition it's really, is the competition steep. is really, really, really stiff. Because mm. like, you find another model who is almost looking exactly like you. Mm. And you're like, okay, we are going to the same casting. Are they really going to book me? <laughs>